Welcome to our course in Community Change and Public Health. I'm Bill Brieger. Our first lecture is going to be used to guide you through the ecological model to provide some context to community change. In the ecological model, we are looking at five levels of change. One thing that we're concerned about is that we don't look only at individuals and whether they adopt a new health behavior or not, but consider the other factors, such as family settings, such as health service availability, such as community leadership and norms, even the enabling envi uh, environment of policy and laws to see how all of this fits together and influences behavior. Ultimately, again, we will be focusing this course on the community, but we want you to be aware of this broader context. This ecological model, as I said, forms the basis of our course, Social and Behavioral Foundations of Primary Health Care. Uh, the website is there if you want to look at the overview of that broader course. And you can download the course materials, the slides for free, at our OpenCourseWare site, which is also listed on this uh, slide. So again, you can have access to these broader materials and see how our course in community change fits into that broader context of the ecological model. I'm just going to say a bit more about the ecological model as we go along and use the example of insecticide-treated bed nets that help uh, prevent malaria. There's a goal throughout malaria endemic regions of the world that at least 80%, if not more, of people living in those areas will sleep under a bed net every night. These bed nets have uh, insecticide uh, impregnated into the fibers as they are manufactured and last at least two or three years uh, in terms of their uh, strength with the insecticide. The nets may actually last longer. But uh, the idea is that these would be replaced. But if majority of the people in the household uh, sleep under these nets, they will be protected. The nets will kill mosquitoes, so have a double benefit. So the individual is protected, the community is protected. The uh, interpersonal level, uh, intrapersonal, the individual, is uh, what we're concerned about there is what do they think about nets? What do they think about malaria? Do they perceive this as a problem? Do they perceive themselves at risk? Do they think the nets are helpful? Do they think the nets are inconvenient, hot, uh, lack of ventilation? What problems do they see at their own level? How is this influenced at the interpersonal level, at the household power structure? Uh, we've seen many examples, which we'll talk about in terms of the in the house. Just because nets are there doesn't mean that the vulnerable people, like children under five or pregnant women, are actually using them. We want to look in the community and the social networks and see how these can influence the distribution and use of nets. Of course, the community we're talking about, how easy it is it to organize them? Can they take responsibility for net uh, distribution and monitoring? Uh, are there disenfranchised segments of the community? What is their history of involvement? Then the institutional level, of course, the public sector is the largest supplier of these bed nets, but you can also get them through the uh, private sector. There are shops that sell nets. Uh, sometimes they're subsidized, sometimes they're at cost. But the question is, are there enough institutional outlets so that people can get the nets? Is there institutional support to follow up for replacement? You may have a big campaign, but then again, new people are come into the community, new children are born, so we need a constant replacement. So are the institutions, the antenatal care, prenatal care uh, clinics, the child welfare clinics, uh, schools, uh, like I said, private shops, are these all set up such that these institutions can support continued bed net um, acquisition and use? And finally, some policy issues that are extremely important in understanding this. The community may want nets. They may be willing to use nets. But if there are taxes on importing the nets uh, or tariffs, if there are priorities on other areas uh, and their or their lack of guidelines and strategy documents to encourage the distribution and use of nets, no matter how much the community, the family, the individual wants these nets, if the policy does not enable their easy distribution, there will be challenges. So we need to look at the behavior of policymakers, of program managers, of community leaders, of family members, uh, organizational members, as well as the individual who ultimately will sleep under that net. So again, the ITNs themselves, as I said, they are now in, produced as long-lasting nets. In theory, they could last five years, but in practice, we've discovered that in, quote, normal use, where children are running around the house, where people tend to wash them too much, 
their functional life may be less than uh, half of those five years. Uh, community distribution has been often done through mass campaigns. Uh, they're free uh, in those campaigns, uh, but the question is what happens afterwards? We've talked about that. So we have these three uh, aspects of net distribution. Catch up, where we want to make sure that everyone in the community, every household has enough nets to cover their sleeping spaces, so the campaigns do that. Keep up where we provide nets through services like antenatal care uh, for all pregnant women, and hang up. It's no point to have a net in your house if you keep it in a trunk under the bed. So you need to hang it up and actually sleep under it. And again, we need support at all these levels. Different uh, aspects, for example, the, the catch up, organizing the national policy makers and program managers uh, are important for that. The hang up, uh, part of it is very important for community groups, family members to encourage and support each other. So one thing about this ecological model, it gives us different perspectives on where to intervene to bring about community change. So again, we do this all in the context of the local culture where people may think that there are other preventive measures that are better. They may have a tradition of herbal treatment to prevent because they believe the cause may be hard work. And of course, you can't stop working hard when you're a village farmer. So it's better to take herbs than to uh, stay home and not feed your family. So we always have these contrasts within the community to, to look at our interventions and the bed, bed nets in particular. Okay, one of the things at the intrapersonal level, the individual, if you have a bed net or you know bed nets are being distributed, what makes you decide you want one, you will hang it up and you will actually use it? following all those steps. One of the things that people say they like about the nets, it beautifies their home, uh, it keeps them warm in the rainy season. Of course, it keeps them hot in the, uh, in the dry season, they say. Gives some privacy within, because uh, what happens is that the bed is somewhat covered, and in many uh, small rural communities, people don't have many rooms in their homes, so the bed net covering the bed is, uh, is a good thing for them. Uh, other insects, bed bugs, are killed by the nets, and uh, certainly there are people that believe uh, the bed nets will prevent malaria. They believe that mosquitoes carry malaria. Not everybody believes it, and even if they be don't believe it, they may have heard it at the clinic. If you ask them, they will tell you what you want to hear, but they may not believe it. Some of the constraints, we talk about the lack of ventilation, heat, um, the idea that if mosquitoes are not visible very much, like in the dry season, maybe there won't be malaria, let's not use the nets. Uh, some people prefer alternatives. There are parts of uh, western Nigeria that would much prefer to have a simple window screen built by a local carpenter than to sleep under a net. Other people will burn herbs or mosquito coils. So there are different preferences, and this is the thing we learn in from the commercial side of behavior change, people make choices based on their perceptions and preferences. So there are many different uh, beverages that people can choose from. And we need to realize that there are many different ways of preventing malaria from, uh, or mosquito bites, from the point of view of the community. They may not all be scientific, but it's the community preferences. So we have competition out there. Um, and again, one of the things that we need to think about, the cost of buying extra nets if there were not enough for, uh, in the distribution for everyone. On the interpersonal level, as we mentioned before, even though there are bed nets in the household, the vulnerable groups may not be using them. And the demographic and health surveys that are done on a regular basis in uh, malaria endemic countries have shown, as in this chart, that less than the desired proportion, as I mentioned before, 80% of children, of women, and pregnant women are actually really using the nets in their household every night. So this is a challenge. They may be there, but for some reason, we need to find out what are the dynamics in that family, in that community, that may be preventing the individual from using the net. Uh, community level questions. Are nets being marketed? As we can see, there are all kinds of nets being sold along the streets in Ouagadougou or Bamako. Uh, these may not be impregnated nets. They may not be the best ones, but they're available. Um, is there, uh, are there local associations that can help with the distribution and encouragement of use of nets? How will the local leadership take uh, a role in making sure that people get their nets? 
Are there subgroups that have been neglected that we need to make sure they do get met? So these are community level questions. Um, one thing we want to find out is how can all these different community groups, sections of the community get involved? And I think some of the lectures will talk about different involvement mechanisms, different uh, levels of participation in our subsequent lectures. Uh, some of the organizational questions or institutional level questions, again, the community may want the net, but in terms of getting things organized, the health system may have difficulty getting enough nets to the right place at the right time. Uh, sometimes we're forgetting about the role of the private sector that could play in providing nets either at cost or subsidized. So these are the kind of things we need to look around uh, at these different institutions and see how they can be appropriately involved. Again, we're, we're concerned about the community in this course, but we have to be aware that there are these other levels that impinge on the ability of the community to, to uh, solve its health-related problems. Uh, there are a number of private sector organizations. Pharmacy shops in Ghana are selling nets. Uh, private uh, foundations uh, and corporations are uh, providing support for vouchers. So there are a number of things that we need to consider. At the policy level, you can have uh, your nets piled up in the storeroom. Do they get out to people? Uh, is there provision for money for logistics? Um, is the fact that government's providing free nets affecting uh, people's uh, willingness to use them? Is it affecting the private sector, which is a problem because in the long term it may be the private sector that needs to keep up the supply of nets. Uh, has the government um, done anything to encourage the local production and manufacture of insecticide treated nets? And if it doesn't, is it uh, removing uh, customs uh, from imported nets so that people can get them? This is one thing, the left hand and the right hand, the Ministry of Health may be importing nets, the, um, the customs officials may be wanting to make money off of nets, and the poor people in the country suffer because of that. So again, the key points in the ecological uh, analysis is that people may want to sleep under nets, but other family members may take priority, uh, certain sections of the community may be left out, Organizations may not be able to maintain their momentum and a reliable supply of nets. National strategies may neglect community involvement or charge import duty, which slows down access to nets. So we need to be aware of all of these things before we decide who is at fault if people are not sleeping under nets. Um, hopefully the ecological model, as you can see, is a background uh, to this and can now see how our course on community change fits into that broader model. For those of you who are interested in learning more about malaria, we have some of the websites, uh, a blog, Twitter, things that I work on in malaria that are a way of doing advocacy to bring about change. Uh, again, we see this as a background to the course. We hope you will enjoy uh, community change in public health. Thank you for joining us.